Hello again guys, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome back to Feed the Beast Infinity. And this is another weekend video, so it'll probably be quite short in this I overrun, which tends to happen. I've still got lots and lots of stuff that I want to try and do. I'm still working on the multi-farm. That's going to take some time because I still need to find a good place to get it set up. Trying to find the right spot for it. Apparently, since the last time I used multi-farms, they've actually drastically increased the size of the farm that it creates. So, the largest multi-farm that you used to be able to build, which was a 5x5, uh, machine, a uh, 5 by 5 by 4 machine block, used to make a 17 by 17 farm. Apparently now that makes a 35 by 35 um, block farm, which is absolutely huge. So I need to try and find a good spot and decide what size to use. But we are already starting to make the bits and pieces for it. I am currently uh, macerating up some tin upstairs. If we go ahead and uh, take the tin we already have macerated, we can put that in the furnace and get the um, get some tin ore because we do need tin ore in order to make uh, these things the tin electron tubes because we need to make farm blocks and in order to make farm blocks there are several different ways you can make the farm blocks you can make them from various different uh, materials so you can make them from um, stone bricks you can make them from mossy br uh, mossy bricks cracked mossy bricks you can make them from normal bricks uh, sandstone nether brick chisel brick lots of different options I'm just going to make them from stone bricks because stone bricks are really easy to make. You just literally take uh, four stone and put them in a crafting table uh, to get stone bricks. And we've got plenty of cobblestone around. We can uh, smelt that cobblestone down to stone in the electric furnace, which obviously is solar powered. So that is free. So we're just going to pretty much do everything with stone bricks. And uh, in order to make a stone brick into a farm block, we need copper ingots. We need wooden slabs, but we also need the tin electron tubes. Now, copper's not a problem and the uh, wooden planks aren't a problem the pro problem comes from the tin electron tubes now they're relatively cheap to make i mean it's five tin ingots and two redstone but that does give you four tin electron tubes and if we look that will actually make us um so we get four blocks from one lot of materials there uh, we do need to make these in the ther thermionic fabricator they do require half a bucket so 500 millibuckets of liquid glass and to make liquid glass we either need to put sand glass panes or um sand directly into the uh into the thermionic fabricator now I don't know if you guys have used a thermionic fabricator before if you're familiar with the way it works let's just carry on just feeding some tin into this but the way the thermionic fabricator works is you actually need to be able to melt the glass that you've put in there hopefully the macerator will finish i'll move away from here while i'm talking so it makes life a little easier uh, let's just pop upstairs to the thermionic fabricator so what you can see here i've already actually uh, put some glass in there and it is full with um with glass there is 200 millibuckets in there let me just remove the glass for the time being and um I'm going to throw the switch. This is now working. I have gone and put peat in the engine because last time we put the engine in but we hadn't put any peat in there. So as you can see, the engine is now working. That switch works through the wall because it's on the other side of that block. And uh, you can see the little blue line of power. So we are getting power from the engine. It's all well and good. And when we get multiple machines, we'll probably have multiple engines. It'll work a little bit more quickly. Uh, so what you can see now... On the interface here, we've actually got this little tiny orange line. Now, this is the heat being produced by the thermionic fabricator. This little golden bar, this is the bar that represents the temperature that must be achieved to melt the item that's put in this box. So, if we put glass in there, we need to get to this temperature to melt the glass. If we were to put sand in there, which I don't have any on me at the moment, uh, but if I had sand and put sand in there, that yellow bar would move up to about here somewhere. You need much higher temperatures to melt sand. Obviously, you can just put sand in a furnace first and melt it down to glass, which is a little bit cheaper. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. I'll just get a few more um, of those little tubes sort of queued up. Let's take the rest of that tin. We'll put the tin in there. We'll take the uh, the tin bars that we already have. We'll take the redstone. I'll just take a piece of sand as an example because I should be able to show you. We'll probably need to put some more in there anyway. Um, but if we go back up to the thermionic fabricator, and if I take that glass out and put the sand in... It's probably not going to change because it's already full of liquid, but uh, if that was empty, that would jump right up to the top. But I've got lots of, uh, well, I haven't got lots of glass, but I've got enough glass, so we'll, we'll leave that there. Uh, we'll just quickly split up the uh, redstone just to make this easier. And we'll, uh, we'll split down the, um, the ingots that we uh, have here as well. We'll try and uh, even them out as much as possible. 
see what we can get and um, that's probably going to be all that we can make so we can just go ahead and make as many of these as we can we've now run out of glass so you can see we, we are having to melt down the uh, the glass now if i take that glass out and put sand in it hasn't changed this time around which is strange but we'll put the glass in because we need the glass to melt down in fact yes it does it, it just moved so if i put that back there you can see the sand the yellow bar is all the way up here. It takes a lot of temperature to make sand, uh, to make the sand into liquid glass. Now, the longer you leave the machine running, the hotter it will get. Um, there used to be a way, at least I was fairly sure that there was a way, uh, that you could actually make it stay hot or get hot more quickly. I can't remember whether it was some sort of upgrade for the machine itself or whether there was something else that you could attach to it, like there was another little machine you could put at the side of it or underneath it. I can't remember how that worked, but I'm almost certain that there was a way to... Um, to actually make it stay hot or get hotter more quickly. So it's going to take a little bit of time before it um, can melt that glass. Should still be getting uh, getting power. It's quite a quiet machine. I'm sure we've still got fuel in the... Um, it's because it doesn't make a lot of noise like all of the uh, IC2 machines do. Yeah, we're st certainly still producing power over here. In fact, we've only used one block of peat since I, since I set this up. It does create ash, of course. We will have to find a way at some point to uh, take the ash away from the peat-fired engines. Uh, again, there was something you could use the ash for, and I can't remember what that was. There we go. It's now melted the glass. We have liquid glass in there, and we can take those other tin electron tubes. I'll turn this off for now, because that's all we can make until I smelt up some more tin. Although, that being said, we should have some more out of the macerator now. Or did we put the lot in? Yeah, we've got some more tin ingots in there. Let's go Let's go and do it while the thing's still hot. I'll leave it, uh, leave it running, and uh, we can do that. So, we need to put in the uh, rest of the tin ingots, and we'll probably get one more lot out of all that. And uh, and there we go. That really is all that we can uh, we can afford to do there. I think are we actually I can't remember whether these switches are in the on position or the off position now. It's off. Okay, that's fine. So you don't actually need power to use the machine. As you can see, I just made the items without the machine being on. But you need the power in order to melt down the, li the, the liquid glass. That's the point of the thermionic fabricator. It's doing the liquid part, not the crafting table part. So the main thing that I want to get done on today's video is I did uh, mention previously about wanting to learn Thorncraft. And I thought that I had dabbled with it before in the past, but I couldn't really remember. And then somebody pointed out that you need to go and make the simplest of ones, right-click on a bookshelf, and that will give you the Thormonomicon. And then I started to remember, yes, I did start to dabble in this before. So what we're going to do is we are going to go and get a bookshelf, because I don't have enough materials, I don't have enough paper or anything in order to go and make uh, a, book a bookshelf. So we're going to go and nab one from the village because there's almost always going to be one at the village um so what we're going to do is i'm going to take my sleeping bag with me and we are going to go up to the roof we're going to use our um uh, our hang glider and we are going to head over towards the village. Now, I think the village is that little waypoint. Oh, it is indeed. So, as you can see, 700 and something meters away. Now, I have set a waypoint there. And as I said, I could have just teleported over there. But that would be um, that would be a little bit uh, uh, lazy. So, I can show you guys the way. Um, I did dig up all of the peat bog and replanted it all. It's a little bit pointless doing that because I will eventually have the multi-farm. And I think this is where the multi-farm is going to be. I think uh, those le those blocks there just represent the height of the multi-farm. I think that's why I dug down to that level. Is that even the one? No, that's too close. That's not the hole that I dug. Because I'm sure I put torches in the hole that I dug. Here's the hole that I dug. There we go. That's where the um, top of the multi-farm is going to be. Just so that I know the right height and the right distance away from the farm. So that is the plan there. Uh, we also need to make some bee scoops. Obviously, we've got forestry. We've also got bees. And it'd be nice to do something with that. I didn't fully explore the village last time I went there because it was getting dark and there was lots of nasty stuff around and in the end I just ended up um, uh, sort of teleporting back because I had to log off to do something else but it was a good way to uh, to have a look around. Uh, let's get right over to the uh, to the edge here. We'll use our hang glider. Now somebody did tell me that you can glide faster by uh, pressing shift so we'll try that. So there we go. We've clicked. We're going to jump. We're going to press shift. There we go. We move a lot more quickly here. So we should be able to cover a lot of ground. 
Unfortunately, you really need to get high ground in order to um, make the most out of the, uh, the hang glider. So we'll have to try and find our way over here. It might get dark soon as well. That's quite the possibility, but that's okay because we do have um, we do have the sleeping bag with us. We haven't had a chance to try that out yet. Got another beehive over here. Got massive, uh, very tall, thin volcano. Another one of these uh, a meadows hive. Some raspberry bushes. Not going to bother with that because I've got literally raspberries coming out of my ears back at the uh, back at the home, as it were. Some random flowers that apparently are not connected to anything. It's starting to get dark. We are heading towards the village. I don't think this is the exact route I took last time because I certainly didn't um, tramp through the water. But uh, are these vines actually while we're here? It's getting dark. What's this stuff? Mud. Okay. It's getting dark. So before it actually gets dark, let's use our sleeping bag. As um, There we go. We've used our sleeping bag. Fantastic. Did it even take durability damage? No, that's quite good. Okay, so the, we do have some vines here. I'm going to grab these vines just while I'm here because vines do allow you to make... Um, am I even getting these vines? No, do I need another item to cut them with? Maybe I need the shears. Yeah, I thought you used to be able to get vines just by breaking them, but apparently not. You need shears for them. That's a bit of a pain. Okay. Well, I've got shears, but not on me. But at least I know I can... And I know where there is some now. We do have an area with vines just uh, on the way to the village. So I can come back at a later date and get those. We've got, we know we've got sheep around here. We've got mud around here. So not a bad little area at all. Can't really use the hang glider at the moment because there isn't any high, uh, any high ground around. Oh, so you actually move more slowly in the mud. Uh, mud. I don't think I've ever experienced mud before. Ah! We have two luggages. Now I can tell you exactly why we have two luggages. Ooh. And that's because when I came here before, my luggage disappeared. And I had absolutely no bloody idea where luggage was. Because I couldn't find him. He got completely and utterly lost. And um, I decided, because I thought the game had screwed me over, that the best thing that I could do was um, spawn another luggage in. Because I didn't want to spend another diamond. Don't go over there. Now, I'm going to have two luggages now, aren't I? Right, get out of there, both of you. Just get out of the mud. Don't don't get in the mud. Get out of the mud. Look, I'm making it really easy for you. Here's how you get out. Brilliant. Now, if I do end up with two luggages, which is quite a possibility. In fact, what I'm going to do at the moment is um, I'm going to just pick both of them up. Has the other one disappeared? No, we do We do now have two luggages. I'll put one of them in storage just in case one goes missing again. I always wondered where he'd got to. I just wasn't able to find him. Okay, well, that's that mystery solved. Um, what have we got here? Here is another tree, a willow wood. I don't think I have any willow wood. It's an interesting colour. We'll grab some of that while we're here. I know this isn't the reason that I came here, but, you know, while I'm here, some uh, blue milk caps. Also, of course, this means that I get the... Um, the saplings from these as well, so I can go and plant plant them somewhere else. Sounds like we've got some uh, hobgoblins around. Definitely got some. There's one over there, look. There's a few of them around. I think there was actually a few in the village. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with the, these hobgoblins before. I don't know what mod they're from, but I did notice that they do hang around in the village with the normal villagers. So let's go ahead and um, continue heading towards the village. It's a maple tree. And of course, when we get the uh, the bees going, we'll be able to get ourselves some uh, cross pollinated trees and do a little bit of uh, a little bit of forestry that way. We're nearly at the village, so let's carry on heading there. Here's another beehive. Look, this one's an unusual hive. Haven't made any scoops yet or anything. Got plenty of wool. It's not a problem. I just hadn't really considered doing bees much before today. So let's try and get over to the village if we can. I may end up just teleporting back for speed. So, I am cheating on this game a little bit, but only as much as one, I teleport, and two, I spawned in a new luggage because I thought my old one had despawned. I did go and read upon the forums, and I looked on Reddit and stuff. When I lost my luggage, I thought, oh, is it, um, has it despawned? Has it gone missing? Is something wrong with it? And um, everything I read said that um, entities sometimes have a habit of being a bit glitchy. So, uh, I just thought, well, okay, I'll respawn it in. I wasn't going to spend another diamond on it. Um, 
You are a, a strange looking villager who I've not seen before. Ah, emeralds for a notebook. A lot of zombies and something around. Lots of villagers. But what we want to find, hopefully, is a... Um, I do love it when it spawns these villagers and they can't even get in and out of the doors and stuff. Landmines. For gold orby bushes. Fair enough. What do you have in your... Ch oh, wow. You have stuff. An obsidian pickaxe head. A paper pan. A copper chisel head. If I nick stuff from here, will you be unhappy? Hmm. Uh, I don't need the iron stuffs, but we can take some of the other stuff. Do I need the mud ball? I could spawn one of the luggages. Do you have anything else useful in here? No, probably not. You have some nice carpet. Um, don't want the cobblestone. Don't want the mud. Don't want the sand. Merry Christmas. In fact, you can have the plants as well. There you go. It feels like a fair trade. Where is this zombie that I can hear? Oh, you have a, a cactus. How how quaint. Um, hi there. Um, you have nothing that I want. Uh, what do we want? Bookcase. Where are we going to find one? I wonder if there's anything. There used to be chests up on top of these things. I'm always happy to nick stuff on the villagers, so that's fine. Anything up here? No, that's a little bit boring. Down we go again. The village is the only thing that I've found so far. Oh, they even have a smeltery. How quaint. Uh, it doesn't have any um, pouring channels, so I don't know how they can actually use it. It's a broke, it's an incomplete smeltery. And it doesn't have a control block or, or anything. I think you're doing it wrong, guys. You should go and watch one of my tutorial videos. They're handy. Um, what have we got? You, you port for emeralds. Is this the one that I've already been in? No, because you can't get to it because the door's in the way. So what do you have in your chest? Copper axe head, obsidian wide guard, definitely take that. Um, slime chisel head, no reason why we can't grab these. Here we go, have some sand. Still need to find ourselves a bookshelf. Wow, there's lots of these places with um, obsidian pickaxe head, slime pickaxe head. Let's get rid of the seeds. We'll grab all of this stuff while we're here. Definitely, what don't we need? Confusing powder, got stacks of that. Okay, now we need to make an actual effort to find a bookshelf before we end up at night time. And again, I wanted to keep this video relatively short. There's got to be at least a book, one bookshelf around somewhere. There's a sheep wearing a hat, a hat which I believe I already have. Nothing in there. What are these? Oh, we've even got like a rail station here as well. That's quite cool. We've got carts. We've got rails. Very, very interesting. Creosote bottles, engineers overalls. That's quite cool. Um, we've got an engine connected to a rolling machine, a hobbyist steam engine. Wow. We can always come back and steal this later on. It's a little bit of a useless track considering it has a buffer at either end, so it's not going to go anywhere, but at least we can come back later on and, uh, borrow those things permanently without permission. Hmm. Yes. Can you please direct me to your closest bookshelf? I don't think I, why am I walking sideways? I've got a key stuck. Um, I don't think I've ever been to a village before that hasn't had a bookshelf somewhere. No bookshelves in there. They've got the well, as usual. I wonder if it's, this is some kind of nerf. Have we been in this one? Probably. Yes, we've been in there because it's full of sand. Let's get up onto the roof. Have a look around. Hmm. Hmm. I love the strange little noises those hobgoblins make. You can trade with some of them, but not all of them. Uh, we've been in that building, haven't we? I should just leave the doors open so I know which ones I've been into and which ones I haven't been into there. Yeah, I'm actually confused there. I haven't been able to find a single bookcase here. I mean, it's not the biggest village, I'll, I'll grant you. So... That being the case, I'm going to have to go and try... I've got horses. Don't have a saddle, so I can't really ride the horses. Oh, it's a sheep with a halo. <laughs> Apparently, it's what I've already got. Um, we're going to have to try and find some reeds, then. Going to have to make my own bookshelf. That's a little bit annoying. Oh, let's turn the saber off. Don't want to waste it. Apparently, I'd had it turned on for quite some time and hadn't realised because it's used up a lot of its power. 
Any reeds down here near the edge of the water? I think we'll be teleporting back soon. I did pick some reeds up, so I may have some paper somewhere, but certainly not enough to make an entire bookshelf. Very, very surprised that I didn't see one in there. Don't want to stray too far because we are loading more chunks in. and it all, The more chunks that I needlessly load, the more it lags the game out. Can't see any uh, reeds at all at the moment. Absolutely nothing. But at least I know where I can find... Um... Oops, let's get up there. Uh, at least I know where I can find vines now. So that's going to help because we can use the vines to make moss. We can use the moss to make the... Uh... Tinker's Construct upgrades for our tools so that they auto repair in the daylight. I'm just going to take one more quick look around the village, try and make try and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Uh, so we've been in the little rail yard, we've been in this building here, they don't have anything. Uh, this building doesn't have anything. This building I don't think we've been in, but it doesn't have a bookcase, which is disappointing. Let's have a look over here. We've been in the tool building. That doesn't have anything. We've been in this one. We've been in this one. I think we've been in... Well, we haven't been in this one because it has this stupid little step thing. But I don't think there's anything in there. Can't see a bookshelf, so I'm going to assume there probably isn't one. Nope, isn't one in there. Um... Uh, Sounds like somebody's punching somebody. What have we got in here? Nothing in there. These buildings do spawn in some strange places. And that's just full of dirt. So, ultimately, we don't have any of the things that we came out for. Okay, well, let's just uh, zip back home then. So, we'll have a look and see what stuff we've got. Got a lot of stuff that we need to put in storage now. I'm just going to charge up the old um, nano saber. I've accidentally turned it on, which I don't want to do. So we'll just charge up the old nano saber, and that'll take quite a bit of power out of the uh, MFE, but that's fine. Obviously, the MFE is not going to charge up right now because it is, uh... well, it is still getting some charge, so there is still some daylight going. Some of this stuff could do with a little bit of power, so we'll just quickly charge you. don't think I took an awful lot of damage. I don't know why it should need any power, but let's get everything topped up. That's fine. Doesn't matter that it's night time because we are in here. So let's just go downstairs, put a few things away. So we're going to put away our... No, hang glider's going to go in tools. I think sleeping bag can go in there as well, actually. Be a good place for that. Sleeping bag and uh, hang glider. We don't need the um, egg, so let's just uh, pop that one. We actually got a chicken. I'm going to put one of the luggages in here, and the other luggage I am going to... Um, release back out into the wild um mud ball we can keep that got a lot of sorting to do i really need to get some sort of sorting system where i can just dump everything in one chest and have the the chest sort everything uh for me it just makes life so much easier um wood is going to go in this chest and uh, as for all of this stuff let's put the uh, let's put the peat bars in here let's go down to where we have our smeltery and uh, really need to make a chest for parts and stuff, but I guess we can put these bits in here for now. Although it will take up quite a lot of the space. We will need to make another chest. In fact, I don't even have any wood on me, which is a little bit annoying. Um, let's go ahead and um, I guess we can put them in the in the crafting station, actually, because we're not really using the crafting station chest for anything, are we? So let's go ahead and just grab those. And um, what I'll do then, just very quickly before I end the video is I will make my first wand. So let's just quickly sleep it off because I'm going to want to go outside very shortly. Because I did find a node. And we will be able to use that node with our wand, I think. Even though we haven't got the bookshelf yet. Uh, do I have enough mats to make a bookshelf? Do I have any, any paper or reeds or anything? I did have some stuff. I know that I did. Um, River cane... It's probably right in front of me and I'm missing it. I was sure I'd picked up some some reeds at some point. Sugar cane. Now you can make paper from this, I think. It's been so long since I've played. It really is. Ah, yeah, can, we can make three paper, but that's the maximum that we can make. Um, and I think you need quite a bit for a bookshelf. So let's have a look. 
a bookshelf requires three books and a book requires um, three paper and a leather or three paper, a string and two blank patterns. So we've got the leather. We just need, um, we need more paper. I've got leather in here, haven't I? No, we've only got two leather, but cows are easy enough to find. So we'll be able to make a book, just can't do it at the moment. Let's go ahead and do our wand. We need nine iron nuggets. Not sure if we've got any iron nuggets anywhere, but if we can grab an iron bar from somewhere or two. There's one iron ingot. I need a second iron ingot because I need nine nuggets. Uh, no, I need ten nuggets. You only get four from uh, nine from an iron bar. So uh, let's go ahead and just put this onto molten iron. I'll have uh, one ingot. Thank you very much. I haven't got one in this chest anywhere, have I? No. There we go. So we have another iron ingot. We will get out my way, luggage. What am I stuck on? Chests and all sorts. Let's go over to the crafting table. We will get ourselves some iron nuggets. Now, we make the cap in this fashion. And that gives us the iron caps. We need two of those. And then we need a stick with an iron cap on either end. And that gives us our iron capped wooden wand. We have our first our first wand from, or our first object even, from Thorn Crafting. You see it has a little uh, icon up there in the corner. I'm not exactly sure what that represents. But let's just go over to where I had found that node. We've got to be careful because we could get attacked by one of those um, annoying uh, eldritch thingies again. Which is quite possible. But I did see one. Now, someone said that I can just go and break the um, the obelisk with a pick. Um, I know I have broken some of the normal obsidian obelisks with picks. Because I got rid of one that was up near the farm. And you can still see the corrupted land up there. Not too sure how you get rid of the corrupted land. Um, but I don't know whether or not I actually need to leave that thing down there. Now, I did stumble across. There's one there. You, you probably can't even see it on YouTube. But right in the middle... Of my crosshair there is a node. It's right up there. You can see it against the sky. Look. This sort of faint white patch just here. So that is a node. Now I should be able to use my wand on it. Did that even do anything? Oh, you got to hold down the button. I see. We could get attacked. Now apparently you can drain these things so much that they, um, they can actually disappear. But I'm not bothered. I think that's as much as I can drain from it right now. Yep, that is as drained as it's going to be. It's still there, but it is drained. Now, we could go and try and break that thing. Do have an iron pick. I don't like it. I'll be quite honest. Right, we've got one of these um, annoying dudes down here. So, we'll try and kill him quickly if we can and, and survive while we do it. They're not all that tough when once you have a nano saber, I'll be honest. Of course, his buddy could be problematic. Not too sure how many of these guys are around or how quickly they can respawn. Okay, let's break this thing if we can. Are we doing any damage to it at all? No, we can't break this one, look. This is an eldritch obelisk. Doesn't look like we can break this one. Yeah, we're doing absolutely nothing to it. So, that answers the question then, doesn't it? We, c we can't break the Eldritch Obelisk. So how do we get rid of that? And do we need to get rid of it? What is the advantage of leaving it there? Because I don't like it. I'll be honest with you, it gives me the willies. Haven't found another one of those nodes yet. I know you can build certain things that allow you to find them more easily. I did just stumble across that one accidentally, but at least we have made a bit of a start on uh, Thumbcraft now. Let's get home quickly. And uh, I'll probably end the video there because I think I have done enough. Still hear some skeletons and things hiding down in the... Uh, ooh, down these little holes and stuff. The, the berry bushes are doing very, very well. The blueberry bush, I'm not going to be short of blueberries anytime soon. So the, the blackberries and even the malaberry bushes are doing quite well. So, as you can see, we've got a lot of food, which is very, very good. So, um, still got a few trees and things that I need to tidy up on the outside of the house. And we've got a few more floors we need to build. I'll probably make a floor, especially for Thorncraft. It'll probably be one of the basement floors, because that seems sensible really using the using a basement for our sort of witchcraft stuff uh, got another one of these um, essences but i've got quite a few of those and uh, yeah we'll we'll keep the wand in the backpack but that is um 
that's about it, really. We don't. We want to go up, up and up. So yes, we cannot break that obelisk. So what do I do with that? That's that's the important question here. Answers on a postcode. What do we do about that Eldritch obelisk? Do we need to do anything about that Eldritch obelisk? But that's all for now. I hope you guys are still enjoying uh, Feed the Beast Infinity, and I'll see you on the next video. So until then, goodbye for now.